my name is Christine. Welcome to my podcast, Unmuzzled at 67. So if you're sitting comfortably, I'll begin. Until recently, I had paid very little attention to ADHD. I knew very little about it. And what I did know was that it was a condition children had. And I didn't know anyone with a child who had ADHD. ADHD. However, the more I researched my own symptoms, my behaviour, my emotional challenges, shall we say, adult ADHD kept popping up. I took maybe six online questionnaires that determine whether you have ADHD and what level. And to my complete surprise, I seem to have most, but not all of the symptoms, which put me into the, at the cusp of the severe, uh, uh, of the severe ADHD. I don't know how I felt about that. I was really surprised. I hadn't really expected that. I don't know how I felt when I had to take that in. I think sad, probably, you know, I definitely felt that it's sad that I had lived my life with this, um, but relieved that I wasn't crazy, as that is what I always thought I was. In fact, it's now clear that I had a condition that was brought about by my life experiences and that I knew finally what was wrong with me after all these years. So yes, I definitely felt relieved. It's good to know as well that if you do have this, there are lots of apps, lots of groups that you can join if you want to. I personally haven't got that far yet, but I wouldn't hesitate if I felt that maybe the time was right for me to do that. So let's deep dive into what ADHD, particularly in adults, is and what the symptoms are. ADHD stands for Attention Deficit Hyperactive Disorder. Hyperactivity Disorder. It's an ongoing pattern of inattention and or hyperactivity and impulsivity that interferes with functioning and development. The ADHD nervous system is overwhelmed by life experiences because its intensity is so high. The ADHD nervous system is rarely at rest. It wants to be engaged in something interesting, challenging. So let's look at the symptoms in adults. I'm going to start with being disorganised. You can experience difficulty, keeping track of things, no matter how important they are. I definitely see myself in that one. And there are, there are adults with ADHD that really have trouble performing at work and have problems dealing with day-to-day -day responsibilities. There's also inattentiveness, short attention span, difficulty concentrating, being easily distracted, a lack of focus, and making careless mistakes. Yes, I definitely can see myself in that. Then the list continues with forgetfulness, distraction, restlessness, irritability, and impulsivity. Impulsivity, definitely, definitely, definitely me. I can see myself in 95% of these symptoms, um, but I have less emotional attachment to these, particularly now that I'm aware of, this, of what the source is. Knowing I'm not mental or a BAM has been such a relief. A sense of freedom, actually. I was not insane. I had a condition. So let me reveal more aspects of this condition. One of the, the first things that I found out about and was completely surprised about was a, a, something that can happen if you have this condition and it's called an ADHD meltdown. Now, the, the, uh, this is something I researched. I've not made this up or, or this is actually something that, that I found myself. The very nature of ADHD sets people up for exasperation. 
People with ADHD feel emotions much more intensely than do people without it. And people without it feel fearless, feel powerless to manage people with it. So let's have a look at these meltdowns. I've, I've had a few myself and I really wouldn't wish them on my worst enemy. So meltdowns, as the word infers, involve out of control, intense emotions. that are a force that seems unstoppable. The pent up frustrations mount until something, usually minor, causes rage and anger to erupt and the person to lash out in a frightening meltdown. These emotional meltdowns can be frightening for the person with ADHD and others around them. When an adult with this condition reaches the end of the rope, all interactions feel like crises. They might misinterpret somebody's tone, for example, lose it, and having a melt, but, but having a meltdown looks a bit like this. Angry outbursts, shouting, screaming at people, hurling horrible language and insults. From my own experience, I know a meltdown is truly upsetting for the person. And it's honestly frightening for the person on the receiving end. I have had two horrific ones in three years that were verbally violent and uncontrollable. But I, it was like the devil was in me, a devil I couldn't control. And although I felt better after I got all the rage and the anger out, the person who was the victim <laughs> who has had to endure this violent outburst is frightened by this. This is an unexpected kind of behavior. This lashing out may, and they may not look at you again the same way. That, that was certainly my experience. Um, because this came from nowhere, there was no build up. There was no signs. There was no red flags before this lashing out and this eruption of um, uncontrolled uh, behaviour, um, people feel and 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 are like almost like shocked, so that they're stuck on, on in the spot. They're just so shocked by what's going on that they usually can't even argue or even say anything because it's as if this behaviour, it's as if somebody else has taken you over, and this behaviour is just very frightening because you can also think from that person's perspective that. So how do I know this isn't going to happen again? One minute she's okay and the next minute she's fucking out of control. So before I knew about these ADHD melt meltdowns, I thought there was a devil living inside me that got access to my voice and my behaviour when this red mist descends. Nothing, absolutely nothing can hold this back this torrent of abuse. So these days, in order to minimise the likelihood of such horrible behaviour arising again, I need to keep the right people close to me. And of course, continue to work on myself with my daily practices, meditation to keep me grounded and calm. Well, calm for someone, for someone like me. I've also experienced quite worrying emotional outbursts as well. Not really, I don't think, to do with ADHD, but just because we're kind of talking about that. That happened to me when my past kind of appeared, in, you know, in, in my head. And, and I think, and I'm sure that it all came from, uh, from meditation. It seemed to be able to deep dive into my subconscious and bringing back all these old memories. And, you know, I've talked about it before, how... I was like, fuck, I mean, I didn't remember any of this stuff at all. It was as if I was hearing new information, but it was all very, very upsetting. And it came with very little warning. There wasn't any build up to it. Just all of this information appeared suddenly. 
And there have been times when I would really, again, just burst into tears. One minute I'm sitting have a cup of tea and a rich tea, and the next minute I'm howling and I'm I'm uh, sobbing and I can't stop. And it's like you're sobbing from your soul. And it was always at the wrong time because, you know, you can't plan anything like that, can you? It was always at the wrong time and it was always by the wrong people. People who just didn't know what to do with me and they didn't know what to do with this uh, behaviour because nothing they could do could, could stop it. This is what I used to say. My brain is broken. These were painful times um, I, and I had to endure them alone because I said already nobody knew what to do with me. Nobody knew in these kind of situations and in the ADHD meltdowns. Nobody knew how to cope uh, with it. People just wanted to fucking get out the door and get away from you as fast as possible, which is perfectly understandable. So for me, my ADHD is not diagnosed. I personally don't see a benefit to that because there is medication available, but it's not the route that I would ever take. I, I like to take things into my own hands and give that a shot first. I absolutely don't want to take meditation. Me medication. I always feel like there must be something you can do yourself before you go to that route. So... How do you live with ADHD? Well, thankfully for me anyway, my already established uh, wee daily routine, routine, routines that I have are a great help in keeping me calm. And as I say, well, calm for someone like me. Um, and, and they generally keep me grounded. So, so they have been uh, a big help. And I seem to have found the best way for me to manage myself. I think I've spoken about this before, self-awareness is critical. I've always described myself as a self-observer, um, meaning I like to keep an eye on myself. I watch, you know, my behaviour. Uh, sometimes I don't do it very successfully, but I do try and I'm very aware of if you have a condition like this or you're a bit mental, you have to keep an eye on how you are and how you're behaving. I like my life to be slow-paced, I'd like to keep the drama llamas at bay and spend time with people who are good for me. And I also read a book called ADHD, something about living with ADHD and how you um, how you do that. Uh, and I'm sorry, I forgot to bring it with me. Um, but it gives you some great practical tips. And one of the practical tips that I remember that I thought was so really useful was because with ADHD, you have all those things I've already mentioned. You don't have a great deal of detail with things and you can get easily flustered, easily stressed. You have to work with people that are incredibly calm, incredibly grounded, that pick up all the facts that you don't have and so you can play to your strengths and we'll talk about that in a moment um, and work closely with someone who has a lot of detail, someone who is, is slow paced and can keep you grounded. And I thought that was great advice. And when I look back at my own career, I thought I've always kind of gone for people that are much younger than me to either work with me as an assistant or work closely with me and people that are, you know, very techy because I'm not, I always used to say to myself, you need to invite people into your inner sanctum of work that don't have the skills that you have, Christine. And I've always done that. Um, so I thought that that was really, really good advice. Um, I wanted to have a quick word as well, just before I go back to, to, to this condition, about my own current physical uh, health. Because while I'm waiting for my hip replacement, which is likely going to be about two years plus, you know, that I'm going to have to wait, that news was, uh, was welcome in a way because the backstory of this is I had been in an accident the year before. And so I'd gone to uh, different professionals who looked at my back and, you know, and I wasn't walking very well and I was in quite a lot of discomfort that led on to pain um, and nobody could figure out. So for a whole year, nobody could figure out what was wrong with me. But they're very happy to take my money. They're very happy to say, oh, listen, I know exactly what that is. And then I'd go to somebody else and say, I know exactly what that is. See you. I'll have you back in the gym in a month. No. 
that never happened. That never happened. And I was so kind of gullible and desperate for a solution that I'm just kind of thinking, oh, you know, these guys must know what they're doing. No, they didn't. They didn't know what they were doing. So uh, finally, I went to the doctor. I told her um, that uh, I'd been in a car accident and she asked me to do a couple of wee things. And she says, you know what? This isn't really your back, Christine. This is your hip. I said, you know what? I, I had a feeling that it might have been something like that. But it was it was frustrating and it kind of really clips your wings. And it's not a pity party because I know there's people with much, much worse things than that, particularly at my age. Um, but before this, I was very fit and very active and at the gym. And, uh, and after the accident, I quite quickly became very limited in what I was able to do. It was frustrating and it became a bit depressing for me as well. So I just had to kind of figure out, and especially when I'd been to the doctor and I knew what it was, so I knew there was going to be a solution. I just had to find a way to keep going and keep mobile while I was waiting for the solution, which, would, which was going to be the operation. So I had to just turn to Joe Wicks for seniors. I quite like Joe Wicks, actually. I do quite like him. And I, uh, and I read his story about how he started. And I've got quite a lot of admiration for him. And I, uh, So I kind of go, go with him. Most days I go with him, Joe Wicks for seniors. And it's, it's better than, than not doing anything. Um, and as you know, I, I try to do my 5,000 steps, but I've got to listen to my body as well. And sometimes I don't manage 5,000 steps. A, I've run out of time. Or sometimes I just think, no, I'm feeling a wee bit sore now. I'm going to have to go up the road. And I, and I just know at my age and with this, this condition, I just have to do that. But finally, I know after spending a lot of money and a lot of arseholes, I finally know what is wrong with me. And that is good. And there will be a solution. And I'm looking forward to that. Uh, I miss my level of fitness uh, and I can't wait to get it back. I'm digressing. I just wanted to look to uh, balance everything out by saying um, there are some positives to ADHD uh, and I can also relate to them as well. Um, and there's quite a few. People with ADHD are often highly creative. They're often great problem solvers. Well, I definitely would say without being arrogant that I am a great problem solver and I can always come up with problems, particularly I can always come up with solutions for problems at work that nobody else would ever think of. I, would, I can always come up with something that's completely out of the box and most times will work. And people would think, oh God, that's quite an unusual solution. And But it was just the way my mind worked and that's just the way it was. So apparently this is linked to with, with having ADHD. Um, and, and as I've said here, we, we, we can come up with quite unusual and, uh, uh, solutions because we have, we think differently, we have a different uh, perspective. So we have creativity, spontaneity, we can think outside the box, creativity, innovation. I definitely can see myself, uh, you know, where my work has been concerned. I've always been the first person to do this and find new products, find new things that sometimes people go, what? But, but they do work and I'm always looking for something better, something different. So I can see myself in that imaginative and inventive. Yeah, I, I definitely can see myself in there. And they have empathy. I have empathy now, absolutely. Hyper focus. So it's kind of a, a, you're in between kind of constantly being distracted, but when you put your mind on something, you can focus for a long, a long time on it. Um, have good conversational skills. Maybe. Um, and what's interesting is the ADHD brain produces more theta brain waves. So when I, for example, am. Um, uh, meditating i always have instinctively gone for theta brain waves because you can you can pick whichever ones that you want I me mean, there's about 10 million billion uh, bits of music that you can choose from on youtube to help with your meditation it's just a personal choice and i've always gone for the theta waves because i read that they were you know they were quite relaxing um they were the, the, they could make you a bit more relaxed so I must have known uh, that theta brain waves uh, anyway um, can make those with ADHD quite calm in a crisis. And I would say that I was definitely, although I can be quite hyper, I'm definitely very calm. If anything goes wrong, I can, I'm able to stand still and think things through. So these days, my ADHD is much milder than it was uh, having taken those six questionnaires uh, that, that, time, uh, that, that time ago. And I think it's due to two things. One would be 
what I've said already about my own wee daily rituals and, you know, doing self-care and having a kind of quiet, slow-paced life, which living alone allows me to have the pace that suits me. I don't need to really consider anybody else. And that, that way of life and those little practices and meditation keep me grounded and calm, as I've said before. And I've read also, um, I don't know whether it's true, but that I read that um, symptoms of ADHD decrease as you get older. So maybe, maybe it's that as well. I've said throughout the podcast that I re relentlessly pursue my own personal crusade of finding and being the best version of myself. I can be. I see this as a lifelong project arrested on a daily basis. And I'm very grateful to be alive today to continue in my goal. Because looking back on my life, there were times when I barely survived my own life. Yet, here I am. I feel I was spared. Someone was looking after me. I'm not sure why. But I think if I live long enough, the answer will come. And so how is my life today? Well, firstly, I have made friends with the fact that I don't always fit in. And sometimes I don't want to fit in. So that takes a bit of pressure off me and lets me be myself. No more masking to fit in. Uh, I don't compare myself to others. And I've decided to embrace me and know this is the way my life will be for me. And it is 100 times better than it has ever been. And I will continue to find me and be me. I will always feel different because those with ADHD are different. I don't fight against my feelings of not belonging. I just accept that this is part of this. And even at my age, I have my own goals and my plans to reach by the time I'm 70 in two years time. I'm starting a new podcast soon. And that, because now that I've shared with you my life story and my recovery from my life story, uh, I want to build upon the small community that has grown from Unmuzzled at 67, uh, the, the podcast and the Instagram page. I love this community. And thank you all for your interest in my story and in me. It was completely unexpected and wonderful. So building upon what we have makes sense to me. In order to continue, I need to work on my daily practices. Daily meditation, keep a watchful eye on my ADHD, continue working with my inner child, because these are all part of my ongoing and never-ending recovery. Next time, join me for the last episode of Series 3 and, in fact, the end of the Life Story podcast. So in the last episode, I'm going to choose my personal best bits, the things I like the most from the first and the second uh, series. And if you would like to uh, tell me what your favourite was and would like us to spend a few minutes talking about that, uh, please let me know through Instagram. So thanks again for your company today. It's been great to have you. Uh, and I look forward to seeing you next week.